I had to pick my jaw up off the ground yeah, after you I started that, pulling this fish up. This is so cool. It's so cool. The curtain unveiling right there. Look at that. Wow. Look at that. Look at this beauty. Eric, have you ever seen a Kikokuru like this? Like this? This is like a one this. of a kind, isn't it? Come on. I've never seen a Kikokuru <laughs> like this. Um, this, this thing is just, it's just crazy. I'm man. really fond of the variety, I mean, for starters. Yeah, absolutely. So, Me too. Uh, Me to too. see this guy. So this, this is uh, the winner of your last uh, Koi Grow Out contest. Yeah. Winner from last year was announced just a month or so ago, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We do a big grow out contest. Uh, I sell these koi. They're like six to ten inches, uh, mm -hmm. about 500 bucks a piece. Uh, owners take them home. They grow them out for a whole year, feed them, take care of them, give them some love. Then they bring them back to my shop and we actually have a koi show in house. The breeders who bred them in Japan, they all fly out uh, to celebrate. Uh, to see who's done like the best job yeah. growing their fish. It's always fun. It's always yeah. a good time. Yeah, it's a really good time. And then the winner actually goes to Japan with me the next year. So Jim will be taking his second trip. They tell Japan. Jim if he wants to double his money on this fish uh -huh. this yeah. year, I'm down. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. he you, would, uh, you think he'd go for it? He will not go for it. <laughs> <laughs> this, fish, this fish is, uh, man, even Koda, the breeder, he wants this fish. He's like, this, this would be awesome in my breeding program. Uh, I, none of my Kikokuru have turned out like this before. Uh, however, you know, you can't ship fish back to Japan. They have a real strict policy. About oh, really? That. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. I was just going to ask you know. about that. I was thinking, like, if Jim, you know, wouldn't it be an honor to go, like, I raise it up and send it back? But so yeah. strict policy. I mean, yeah. a strict policy. No, no he, going back, huh? Yeah. In fact, it's a, it's a, a quandary sometimes. Koi breeders have to to deal with, believe it or not. Like, if they have a koi that they think is all Japan koi show level, right? are they willing to let that go to a different country where I'll never be able to compete at the highest level? Yeah. So it's, you know, a lot, a lot of people- What about all the disasters over the years? I mean, they can't bring any fish back? No. Whoa. Yeah. That's outrageous. It is. It I is. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very Hon Honorable in one regard, but like crazy in the other regard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Wow. Exactly. So um, explain how special this is because this is uh, the grow out contest was in America. It's not in Japanese water. A lot of people grow out their fish in Japan and then bring them back, right? Exactly. So this is grown out in the USA. This koi, you know, like I say, a year ago was about six inches. It was probably one of the smaller of the grow out contest fish that we had. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually, and we should probably do a whole video about this someday. This koi was actually grown in just 500 gallons of water. Mm -hmm. um, just massive amounts of water changes, tons of food, uh, good food. Um, this fish is roughly 19 inches. I, I, yeah, just, yeah, we I can, saw him, I wanted to make here. sure. So in a year, he, he, she, whatever, right? Yep. Yeah, 19, yeah, 19, 19 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, in, so, in America. Wow. Yeah. Uh, uses really good food. Uh, it takes, you know, it just takes really good care of Really good of water koi. quality, mm -hmm. lots of fresh new water implemented. So, yeah. And most importantly is the, is the transformation, man. Like this koi, he, he bought this koi just because here on the head had mm -hmm. very good white quality. A lot of times these metallic koi, the white is not super, super shiny. And this, this had really, really shiny white. And the other thing he bought it for was the, um, the body line, mm -hmm. the conformation of the koi. Um, otherwise, to be honest with you, the koi like, you could see that orange pattern, uh -huh. and then all over the orange and the white was just sort of a smearing of black. None of this like crazy outline was there whatsoever. The crazy thing is, six months ago, none of this crazy outline was there. Yeah. Well, show us, show us the. Uh, let's, yeah. let's take a look at the picture real quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so people can see the transformation. We're gonna do that with magical digital effects right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the transformation, it's yeah. insane. So okay. you, you can see how it just had nothing but, it was black and uh, n none of those like crazy lines. None of these black crazy lines are on the outsider here, right? Uh, yeah. So so why did that happen? Yeah, I, no, I was just gonna ask. No idea. Oh, come on, Sean. I asked the breeder about it. I was like, hey, 
I've never seen this before on your Kikokuru. And he's like, I've never seen it on my Kikokuru before. Uh, to be honest with you, we don't think it's going to stay like this for, like, next year, this will probably look like a completely different koi. Well, that's one of the beauties about this variety of Kikokuru is that the changing of patterns and so... Absolutely. And here, you know, here we're essentially able to capture this koi right at the time of the koi show yeah. of its, like, pinnacle and its perfection. Right, so this is an interesting topic about how... Um, you know, koi finish at certain areas, you know, like, mm -hmm. is this fish only going to decline from here, you know, or is it maybe going to get better? Yeah, so, it's, who knows? And I hate to say decline because, right. I mean, it's, the, it's a wonderful fish, but like you said, in a koi show, it's about finishing. Is it going to be at its, exactly. at its peak? Right. Yeah, so I think it's at its peak now. Uh, the only thing that it could improve on is just getting older, so getting bigger, um, it's metallic quality is awesome. I don't see that going down anytime soon. Uh, the big question is whether it's going to be able to maintain this black outline. Right. Or who knows what happens. I mean, if, if this, see how like it's a little bit thicker black right here? Right. Uh, what happens if that black gets thicker everywhere and right. that takes maybe like a year or two years? then you still have a solid, impressive koi on your hand for right. another two years. But seasonally seasonally changing, the, these smears of blacks can change and come in different. Yeah. And then almost look bad, but then get better the following year. Right. One of the really cool things and qualities about this fish that I love is that, you know, changing. Exactly, right. exactly. So uh, we showed you that first picture. Uh, I went out to see this koi in December, and it actually was completely, completely white didn't have any of any of the black that we see here and didn't have any of the like little very like subtle black markings here as well. The funny thing about this is this morning we, while we were setting up and everything was still being done I went over to your big show pond oh, yeah. and there's like this homely looking awful white fish in there with one little one little <laughs> yeah. mark and I'm like uh -huh. what is Sean <laughs> seeing in this why, fish? Why is this here? Why is it in the show pond? I mean I, it makes me know that it's awesome to see that, and a lot of people right. that don't understand the, the potential and the, the changing of the koi, mm -hmm. just go like, that fish is ugly, it's the ugliest fish here, but right. possibly the one with the most potential, right? Could be, yeah, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Well, super fantastic fish. So Jim's going to Japan with you again this year? Yeah, he sure is. He's, he's super excited. What a lucky dog. Yeah. Someone's got to take him down. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's a couple guys in the, in, the, in the hallways, so to speak, that are ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah, there's... But yeah. anyone can do it. That's the, that's the point. 500-gallon pond. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could do this in an apartment, in the back patio. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on. Every, My, everyone should be growing some koi. A lot of people complain about koi shows being a, like a rich man's thing. Like you can spend 50 grand, 60 yeah. grand on a koi and win yeah. a bunch of shows. Uh, we should at, do a $60,000 koi video one day. We, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know that, if that could be done fun. Before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so shows can be bought. My show can't be bought. Everyone's starting off in an even, even playing field. The koi cost is the same, right? right? So it doesn't matter if you're wealthy or not in that sense, because um, everyone's starting with the same quality of fish. It's all about how you take care of the fish, the effort you put into it, right? And uh, you know, money money can't buy effort in that way. It's called hustle. It is. It's, it the, is. One, it's the one pillar of success that you know you, you really have control over. Yeah, right? that's it really exactly is. Right. So. Wow, this is a, this is a great fish just because it shows you that you know anyone anyone can have a koi. Because when you think about a koi show, just like you said, either a they're putting in a lot of money and buying that fish and buying the prize. Mm -hmm. But if they all start on equal level um, playing field, then uh, then you go, oh well, he's probably got a gazillion gallon pond, right? And, you know, it's got a big area, and he probably has a. He probably has a clay bottom pond that he uses, and like, right? Right, exactly. That, that exactly. puts all those myths in the toilet. Exactly. 500 gallon pond on your patio, mm -hmm. getting down. But Jim, yep. Jim probably has an awesome pond too. Like, yeah, right? Jim's got Jim's got two ponds. Jim's got his like right. his collection pond, and then he has a grow up pond. His right? grow up pond. Yep, yep. Uh, another, I had a, several Kikokurus come back to my show. Uh, one of them was a first year hobbyist. He's a guy from my softball team, like a guy I play softball with. Uh -huh. Saw some videos. Was like. Dude, I gotta build a koi pond. I didn't know you did this. This uh -huh. is awesome. Uh, he puts in koi pond in his backyard, little 1,200 gallon pond, gets some grow out koi. Yeah. His fish were so good looking. The breeder was saying, dude, your, 
you grow your fish better than I grow my fish. Yeah. As as two year olds. Uh, Twelve hundred gallon pond. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I want this to be an inspiration to people that that you know they don't have to spend sixty thousand dollars on a koi to have something beautiful. And this is a real inspiration uh, to me as well as it should be to everyone that sure. small pond can still produce massive results. Absolutely, and like this this koi literally could be at the All Japan Koi Show. Like that's that's the quality of this fish. Only it can't go back to Japan. It can't. <laughs> so it can well, win grand champion at the. It can Mr. go to Cherry Koi. Valley with me tonight. If, if, <laughs> it could. If Jim allows it. Yeah, if you if you can negotiate a good price with Jim, <laughs> I'm sure he's willing to let it go. He's got he's got to come up with money to spend in Japan. You right. know. <laughs> well, congratulations, Jim, and uh, congratulations on your show, show because this this is just this is good stuff. This is the stuff that everyone needs to learn. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, thanks, Eric. <laughs>